goodies nastasia here also known as keto jamaican girl welcome back to my channel for those of you who are returning if you have not subscribed to my channel please go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the goodie crew you don't want some of our recipes and our keto tips and tricks and lifestyle and all of that go ahead and click the subscribe button you won't regret it anyway today we are starting our day with a keto matcha green tea latte i've been trying to cut down on coffee and i've been doing that by replacing my coffees with green tea if you want um the recipe that i use to make my keto matcha green tea lattes i'm going to link it below I'll also leave the link below for the matcha green tea that i buy um, from amazon if you're interested in buying them so this is my quick process that i use and of course i use my frother to keep my latte foamy and rich and creamy and here i'm just going to add some sugar-free tarani caramel syrup to up the flavor and i'm going to sweeten it just a little bit more with two packets of stevia this is a great replacement for coffee because it tastes great and it gives me the energy i need to go throughout the day and it has lots of health benefits i'll show you here um today we're going to be unboxing my mother's day gift so we are going to be um opening it up very slowly and um, setting it up if you're not interested in this portion of the video please don't leave don't be like that just scroll over to the food some of you not interested in all of these techie stuff but there are some goody crew members who are here just to see me struggle with apple so if that is you stay with me but if not just scroll over to the food you're gonna see no food in the in the later part of this video but let me shut up so you guys can hear me peel this off If you are an OG of the Goody Crew, you know that I'm a recovering Samsung addict and my husband has been pushing me towards Apple for better um, value in the things uh, that I put out in terms of technology. So yeah, he bought me an Apple MacBook Pro and I am again very nervous because I've always been intimidated by Apple products, but I'm excited to learn something new and to, you know, to put out better work for my Goody Crew and in the other areas of my life. So as you can see so far, I've taken out the uh, computer and I've also looked at the wires. Here you have a manual and it basically has MacBook Pro on the front. And when we open it here, it has um, instructions that I'm actually going to take time to read. I promise you guys, I'm gonna read it. And as you can see, this computer has a touch bar. That's gonna be something I'm gonna have to get used to and to learn to use. And these stickers, I still don't know what to do with them. I still have the stickers from my iPhone 11. If somebody wants it, comment below and I'll send it to you because I don't know what to do with them. Um, here I have my charger plug. Um, I'm going to take off this cute little wrap and it's, they wrap these things really cute and apparently um, Apple people like to hear the wrapping coming off. I don't know if that's like some kind of ASMR thing but they like to hear it. But yes, here is the plug and you see I pull it out here and it looks like this. there's a piece of the plug that you can pull off but before that um, I'm just going to push in the cord here and of course this cord can't work with my Apple. Why Apple? Why you have to be so difficult? Anyway, back to the plug. Um, this comes off. I don't know why and I'm struggling with it because I'm a recovering Android addict But apparently this comes off if you know why this comes off Please comment below and um, fill me in because I am clueless about Apple products and I'm gonna put it back before I break it and Yes, I'm gonna have to figure out how many other products I have to buy now that that wire is completely different from the wire I use with my phone difficult for no reason but yes, I'm going to take off the rest of the wrapper of my beautiful laptop that my husband bought me for Mother's Day. What? <laughs> I got the, I think it's called Space Gray. And um, it's gorgeous. I love it. Absolutely love it. And um, let's open it and begin to set up. But before we do, you see it, it holds the fingerprints. It was one of my issues I had with the iPhone 11 too. Why are you holding on to my fingerprints, Apple? Let me go. Let me go. But yes, I'm going to take off um, this protection here for the screen. And we're going to go ahead Use and Use English up. as the main language. Press the return key. Mac OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, press the command key while you press Touch ID three times at the right end of the touch bar. 
To learn how to use VoiceOver to set up your Mac, tap Escape at the left end of the touch bar. So I finally figured out what to touch and I'm continuing now to set this up, but this is just a view of the keyboard and the touch bar is, is right at the top of the numbers there and it disappears and comes back how whenever it feels like I'm trying to figure out how this works but I'm gonna finish setting up and then I'm gonna read the manual and actually get to the bottom of that so now it's asking me for an Apple ID I finally have one because of my iPhone so I'm gonna sign in and I know I'm not gonna show you my information you guys are too fast I'm not giving you that information but here you can see I'm continuing um, the steps. They're asking if I want to share my information. No, I'm not giving you any information. You guys figure out your product by yourself. Now let's go set up some um, Siri um, with my voice. But first they're asking about screen time, if they want to track my screen time. They can go ahead and do that. I don't spend that much time on technology because I have two babies and a 12-year-old. So I really don't have time to be wasting. But let's go set up the voice um, on Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? So now that Siri has gotten accustomed to my voice, I can finally move on to the next step where they, I guess, show me how to use this touch bar. And um, it's going to now have to learn my fingerprint. And um, this part was quite difficult for me because I was pressing it instead of gently pacing my hand on it. But I figured it out and now I can go on and choose my look. And these are some of the accessories that I bought. I bought a mouse because I am an old person at heart and this is easier for me. And I also had to buy a USB-C converter because again, Apple is very difficult and they like for you to buy additional products. So the cord that works, um, the USB that works in most phones, it does not work with this Apple um, computer. So you have to buy a converter where you can put the regular USBs inside of. This is like a major minus for me because I'm going to always have to have the converter in my laptop so that I can use most USBs with my laptop and that's annoying. They should just have the jack already in it. But for the most part, I'm really excited about learning this laptop and I'm going to take some time now to set it up and to actually um, learn how to use it. And then I'll see you guys back at my first meal of the day. For those of you who stuck around to see me struggle with this laptop, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm definitely going to take some serious time now to learn this device. And I will see you guys back um, at first meal of the day. And I'm going to be trying that um, viral TikTok egg sandwich. And I'm going to be using the Aldi Zero Car Bread. So you don't want to miss it. Don't log off. Just wait a second. And I'll see you in a little bit. 2,000 years later. So it's about 3.45 p.m. And I definitely fasted more than 16 hours today. But it's fine because I really and truly was not hungry. You're going to find with keto and intermittent fasting, your appetite goes away because um, you're running on a different energy source. And you're not full of all those carbs that make you feel like you're hungry. So I'm going to break my fast, like I said, with the viral TikTok sandwich. If you don't follow TikTok, you're going to see um, it's an easy sandwich to make. Well, I thought it was. <laughs> I I think I somewhat failed, but it tasted delicious. So I cracked two eggs, scrambled it up. I added a little bit of heavy whipping cream to loosen up the egg. I added some black pepper here. I'm adding some garlic. And I also added some bacon bits that you usually put on the salad. I don't know what possessed me, but I was like, you know what? Let me just throw some bacon um, on the egg. And I feel like frying up bacon, so I use the bacon bits. And guys, it was really good. So yes, you're supposed to put the egg on, but the egg is not supposed to be so cooked already. So I learned that and I got a little bit of egg on um, the outside of the bread. And now I'm going to try my best to flip it over like they do on TikTok without mashing up the egg. And I somewhat passed that test. And then now you flip over the corners of um, your egg here. And that was a little struggle bus situation too. And then now you, you, you just crisp up the bread a little bit. And 
that middle part there, it could have cooked a little bit more, but uh, my sandwich turned out fairly well. So here you see my, my beautiful work. And I'm, I'm going to add some tomato because that's what I grew up doing. You add some tomato to your egg sandwich. If you're not doing that, you better try because when I tell you it tastes good, mana lie, it tastes good. So yeah, I'm gonna show you a little food porn here of the cheesy goodness that's in the middle of our um, sandwich. So it was fun trying that little um, trick. I will not be making my egg sandwiches like this because it's easy just to make an omelet um, the old school way and just add it to your bread. But it toasted my bread in the process. So I, I think I might, I might continue trying this way. Um, so that's our first meal of the day. I'm gonna see you guys back at dinner. And here we're going to be doing some um, spaghetti squash with jerk chicken. If you have not checked out my jerk chicken video, I'm going to link it above. But what I'm gonna show you guys here is how I treat my spaghetti squash. I don't like wasting food. Wasting food is a sin. So what I do, instead of cooking a whole spaghetti squash, which I know I'm not gonna finish in one night, I cut them up like this and then I put them in Ziploc bags like that. This is what I do when I buy the, the zucchini, um, not the zucchini, the spaghetti squash. I cut it like this and then I put it in the this, in this, uh, Ziploc bag. And then now, when I'm ready for dinner each night, I take about two or three pieces. Sometimes I take more because my husband, he act like he wants to be healthy with me and he wants to eat it. <laughs> I'm joking. He does eat um, low carb um, foods with me. So yes, I take two or three pieces and then I warm up the two or three pieces and then I can use the rest when I'm ready for it. So this is a great hack to not waste a spaghetti squash because nobody really eats a whole one um, in one meal. So now we're going to go on and cut up our spinach. So this spinach is the one that I bought from my massive keto grocery haul, grocery haul, sorry. I usually buy a big bag of spinach and I sneak it in almost every meal I possibly can so that my kids don't realize that they're eating healthy. But yes, <laughs> I'm cutting up about three handfuls of that spinach now and I'm going to add some ghee to that just to help the spinach cook down without burning. And I'm going to, um, just move it around just to get it cooking as fast as possible and then i'm going to add some cut up onion to that remember don't add too much onion because onions can bring in um, some carbs and we're trying to stay um, low carb but i add just enough um, to add some crunch to the dish and also add some flavor and i'm not going to cook it down to translucent uh, blah. to translucent i'm just going <laughs> to cook it down enough to um um, to not be raw and then I'm going to add my cream cheese to this with a little bit of heavy cream to help the cheese melt down and we're well on our way to our our little creamy sauce there um, while that was going on I was warming up my spaghetti squash I warmed it up for about seven minutes in the microwave and here you can see after warming it up in the microwave, the strands just peel right off of the spaghetti squash, no problem. Now this process is easier done on a plate, but I was rushing. You can put it flat down on a plate and just scrape them out, but I was holding it in my hand and scraping it out to save time. So yes, I'm scraping it out right out of the spaghetti squash circles, right into the pan. And um, you can see this is the end piece, so it's a little bit harder to come out, but the circular ones are way easier. And now I'm going to add some garlic parmesan seasoning to it, just to add a little bit of seasoning. Um, if you don't have this seasoning, I'll link it below. Um, but also you can use just some parmesan cheese, maybe a teaspoon, and some garlic powder, because that's your business. If you know, you know. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna go ahead now and mix up my spaghetti squash with my um, cheese and my spinach until they're all um, equally incorporated. And I'm using um, this, what do you call this, a spaghetti ladle or something? It's, it's, they usually use a spaghetti. But this was easier than using the fork and I didn't want to scratch up my good up, good up pots. But now I'm going to add um, some mozzarella cheese on top just to finish out the dish. And I'm going to sprinkle some parsley on top for another layer of flavor and also to make it cute. And then I'm going to cover it up just for a couple minutes to let um, the mozzarella cheese melt and then we'll be ready to plate our dinner. So there you have it, creamy, parmesan, garlic, 
spinach spaghetti squash i'm telling you guys you gotta try this recipe it is so 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 good it was so good that i didn't even want to share it with the kids my husband and i ate all of it and we gave them a different side to eat with their jerk chicken um but yeah <laughs> it's that good and um it's well within our boundaries um for keto or low carb lifestyle so it's perfect so this is the end result if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed yet and joined the goody crew i don't know what you're waiting on just go ahead and do it you won't regret it thanks for watching guys i'll see you in my next video bye